All right, a little after four, we asked him to move because of all the giant stuff yesterday. You know, as I go through the last couple of weeks of the program after 30 years, I wanted to bring back the guys who had such an impact on the city and with the great teams and great championships of the last 30 years. And without question, one of the biggest by far was Andy Pettit. I mean, there's not even any issue. The winningest postseason pitcher of all time, six times he pitched and won clinching games, six different series. He did that, which is an all-time record, 19 postseason wins, and uh, he joins us now. Andy, welcome. How are you? Mike, good. How are you doing? Good to talk to you, Andy. How's life? Man, it's good. It's, 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 things, are, things are really good. How's your, I know your son's playing ball. How's he doing? Yeah, they're, they're, both, they're, they're both doing good. Um, both of them are, are injured. Uh, my oldest boy, uh, is trying to come back from, he's had two Tommy John surgeries and then he actually last December was all the way back from his Tommy John, his second one, and he broke his elbow. So, uh, he's, he's trying to come back. He actually got on the mound for the first time a few weeks ago and he's got a screw in his elbow and, uh, he's, he's feeling pretty good. So we'll see. He's at Rice University and then my, my second son, we just we just have not had good luck. He had Tommy John last year. Wow. Probably won't be ready uh until the middle of the season this year if you know, if he gets to pitch this year, just uh he'll 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 you know, he needs to wait a year. Uh, and with my other son's, you know, what he's had going on, it's just kind of been a mess with him. So we just gonna take him slow, but I've never had Tommy John surgery, and my, my boys have had three of them already. That so. is unbelievable. It just shows you. And, and you were very, if I remember right, you were very careful. You didn't let them pitch early. You were very careful with them, weren't you? Uh, very, very careful. So it just, it just, you never know, right? It just goes to show how, you know, unnatural of, a, of an of emotion it is to throw a baseball. and It just shows and, you when all these plans and everything, you were careful, you were a pitcher, you were as durable as anyone could be, and your sons have both had between them three Tommy Johns. So that would be a great indicator that it's the luck of the draw when it comes to this, you know that? A lot, a lot of times it is. Obviously, you've got to be smart, um, you know, uh, but, but a lot of times it's just the luck of the draw and, and just the way your body is. And, you know, the Yankees told me in 1996 that I was going to need Tommy John surgery. And, and you know, I, I never had to have the Tommy John surgery when I went to the Astros. Uh, you know, my bo- my elbow bothered me, obviously, for seven or eight years there pitching with the Yankees. And finally, on a check swing, I tore my flexor tendon in my elbow, and I think that was what was giving me most of the trouble. But I never did it on one pitch. I ended up doing it on a check swing. So that's when I had to have the one surgery that I had. So it's just crazy. You never know. Uh, you never know. Well, you know, when I go through these uh, years of doing this, uh, there's certain teams and certain people that stick out. Uh, uh, you know, we talk about the different teams. The night, you know, you pit, you were in a lot of World Series. You're in eight count in the Astro one. You won five World Series, but '96 really sticks out as being a special year here. The first one for you guys, uh, and uh, you know, the first one in a long time for the Yankees, and that's the one that I'll remember most because it not only was it was the most exciting of the bunch, and it was also the first one. So, and and you obviously had a very big part of that one with that game five which i've had john smoltz on as a broadcaster he says that's still the best game he ever pitched was that classic game five you pitched against (laughs) in that one nothing game he said it was the best game he ever pitched in his life yeah he was he was amazing again you know we scored one we scored one run on on a believe in era uh you know by them and and you know i was able to pitch a good game Uh, thank goodness after having the flop that i had at at yankee stadium (laughs) there in game one and uh, so to be able to come back and, and, and pitch a good game five and, and get us back to New York to just win one game. And like you said, it was just a, such an exciting series. We lost both games at home. Of course, most people thought the series was over. The Atlanta yep. Braves were so great with their pitching staff. There's no way we could win, you know, you know, uh, two out of three at least, you know, to get us back to New York and Atlanta. And we ended up going there and sweeping them. So just incredible series. Uh, and that was a stepping stone. We've said it right over the years. That was kind of a stepping stone, I think, for all of us. Um, it really was. The, you the, know. Just the confidence, the, the the to know that you know you can come down when you know when, when you you feel like you're buried. And there's no chance to win it. If there's always hope. Uh, whenever you know, for me, especially personally, just you know, a horrible outing and can't get any worse. And then 
you know, you're able to bounce back, you know, and you just, you can just always remember those and build off of them. And they really were for me. That, that, that game and that series was a stepping stone for me. Not that I didn't have, you know, bad games after that in the postseason or whatever, but I always felt like, you know what, I mean, it ain't, you know, I haven't lost it. It's going to happen. And, and if you just get your mind, you know, back to where it needs to be and you're physically able and you're, you feel healthy, you know, anything can happen and you can get it done, whether it's at home or on the road. You know, the amazing thing with you, and we're talking with Andy Pettit, of course, as we remember, and Andy had so many big games and big, you know, 19 postseason wins. And winning was what Andy was about. First, you know, the first pitcher ever to, uh, first pitcher since 1930 to, open up with 12 or more wins his first nine years, 18 years, never one losing season. Uh, all those records he holds in the postseason, there's a million of them, uh, including the biggest one, which is 19 wins. But, you know, we talk about the clinching games, which is the record six times you won series clinches. But what I always think about is there were so many series, Andy, where the Yankees had a habit of losing the first game, and you'd yeah. be on the mound in game two, and it would be, all right, this is a big game. we got Andy on the mound, Andy to Mariano, and away we go. And you know what? So many times we look, we'd be getting ready for the eighth inning, and you'd be coming out or the seventh inning. You'd have pitched great, you know, seven innings, two runs, one run, and then you hand it off to Mariano. And that happened so many times. I can remember so many times where the Yanks would lose that first game and then hand it off to you. You'd be in that second spot and came through so many times well i you know fortunately I, I i did i was able to i definitely had some you know not always was great but like you said it was you know one two three runs i, I was never able i felt like to just dominate a game but i was always able to i feel like make a pitch to get the big double play when i needed to get a pickoff when i needed it and then we always had mariano to come in and, and, and close it out but you know, really, I just, I think not only myself, but kind of the team, I felt like just got a lot of confidence because, like you said, it has happened a lot of times. And once you're able to do it two or three times and you kind of got your back against the wall and you're like, you just start getting so confident. And, and I'll just tell you, whenever we would lose that first game and, you know, Skip would tell me that he was going to pitch me game two, I just felt like we're not losing, you know. I mean, and I, and I think the team felt like that also a yep. lot of times. I had such a great group of guys always behind me, and I really felt like that if I could just give up a couple runs, that my guys were going to score three or four for me. You know, I might not score more than that because in a playoff it was always tough. I don't think we ever had a blowout game where I just felt like I could go out there and, and cruise because all of them it seems like were three to two or four to two or something like that. So. But just, you know, just the confidence that I had with the teams that I had surrounding me, the bullpen that I always had behind me, it, it was just really special and, and awfully fun for me, that's for sure. Oh, it was great. And, I mean, and you did it so, so, I mean, just countless times. But the amazing thing with you is, is that you were not a guy who was going to go out there, as you said. You weren't going to pitch a Verlander game where you gave him no hits or you're going to. Yeah. You had guys on base, but that was when you were at your best. If it was first and second, you were going to get out of it. If it was first and second, no out, you're going to get the double play ball. You're going to get the pop up. You would pitch out of jams in those spots better than any pitcher I've ever seen in the postseason. Well, I'll tell you, I don't feel like I'm a very envious person, and I'm not going to lie to you, though. I've many of many of nights come out of games and said, why can't I go out there and throw a one hitter? Why, why do I have to have runners on first and second and nobody out every other inning, you know, like, you know, and, but anyhow, it was just, you know, I didn't have great stuff. I mean, I didn't dominate games. I felt like I knew how to pitch. I, I could pretty, I could locate pretty good and I could change speeds. And if you can do that, you can be successful. And, and I felt like I was blessed to be, you know, really mentally tough out there and not give in and uh, and just compete my tail off. And, and I, I wish it a lot of times that I could dominate games, but I, I really enjoyed going out there and grinding through the games like I did. It, it, at the end of the day, after my career was over, I, I really, I really, you know, I'm glad that was what I had to do. It kind of made me the person in the picture that I was, I believe. We're talking with Andy Pettit, uh, who had a brilliant career with the Yankees. And, you know, we always used to talk about it, uh, Andy Eyes, you know, the staring in over the glove, you know, that glare when you're looking at the, at the you know, be staring in with that the ability to, to compete there. You were a terrific competitor. And the other thing is, whatever it was with that group of guys, whether it was you, whether it was Bernie, uh, even guys like Brocious, you know, in the yeah. big spot, you guys were so calm as a team 
And, you know, you don't usually see teams. You see teams jumping around and see teams crazy. And you guys yeah. just seem to have a calmness that worked for you guys in all those, all those years. We did. We just had a whole lot of guys that didn't show a whole, whole lot of emotion. We get excited here or there. There's just a lot of guys that were extremely even keel. And, and you know, I, I love that because that's kind of was, was my personality. But, you know, I also feel like, you know, in, in a lot of times in big situations, I mean, you've got to show a little bit of emotion. I'd get a little excited, stuff like that. But we, we, we had a, a lot of guys that were just all about business, all about team. They weren't trying to edify themselves, lift themselves up. And, and, and boy, that's why we had such a great – that's why we had such success and we had such a great group of guys. And the organization always did a great job of, of bringing in players that were real similar, I think, to that and, and just fit the mold real real well. You know, I could close my eyes and see those October nights when you'd be coming off the mound and Joe would come get you top of the eighth or whatever it was. First batter gets on, now he comes gets you. You've, you know, you've got a 5-2 lead or a 4-2 lead or whatever it is, and you hear that place just go crazy. You know, that now that you're retired, you can probably tell us wh- what did it feel like walking, having done your job, knowing you're turning it over to this great reliever, and you've done your job. You're probably exhausted out there. What's it feel like walking off that mound to that ovation as many times as you did? <laughs> You know, you know what? I mean, it felt, it felt really good. Uh, you know, whenever I was exhausted and I was done and I knew I was done, I mean, it felt really good to get to that dugout. But I'll tell you what, a lot of times, um, he would come get me or Joe would come get me and I wouldn't think I was done. <laughs> and, <laughs> you wanted and, to yeah, stay out there. Yeah. And I wanted to stay out there. So a lot of times, and I wish I would have soaked it up and, and just enjoyed it a lot more. But I guess that was just the competitive nature of me. I wanted to be out there. I couldn't stand, you know, sitting in the dugout and watching someone else do it, you know. So a lot of times it was me. I was really kind of just irritated and angry in the dugout, and I was like, man, I want to be out there doing it. But, <laughs> but to know that, that Mo was out there and he was closing the games out and then to know that I had put the, you know, was prepared and, and, and pitched the game to be able to put us in a position to, to win a, a playoff game or a big game in October or whatever, it, I mean, it's extremely gratifying, and, and and I'll tell you, you know, the first couple of years that you're out, I I really didn't miss it at all. But it almost seemed like over the last few years, especially watching the guys, and I was with the guys in Houston this year, and then I went up to New York with them and stuff like that. Man, I'll tell you, you you miss it. I don't miss the regular season, uh, but man, you, you definitely miss the excitement. Of October baseball because there's just there is absolutely nothing like it. We're talking with Andy Pettit. How would the how was the one Houston World Series different than the Yankee Seven World Series? Did it, did it have a different feel to it? Well, it did just because I just don't think you can duplicate New York, right? I, 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 there's just no way to, to duplicate uh, how how special it is uh, the nostalgia, I guess, of Yankee Stadium and, and just those October nights. But it was it was amazing. I mean, the, the excitement that the year that we went in, in Houston, um, they had never won a playoff series the year before, and they had, we had finally won a playoff series. And so we kind of took that first step. And then to be able the next year to be able to get to the World Series was, was an amazing uh, accomplishment. And the way that the city backed the team was absolutely amazing. And, and we saw it there this year, you know, with Houston winning and, and the excitement in Houston. Obviously, I'm in Houston. Um, we had the Hurricane Harvey come through, so it was just it was a, a real emotional time for the city, and and I, I was real proud for the city uh, to be able to, to to bring that World Series home, uh, just because we had been th- we've been through an awful awful lot over the last few months. You know, how about the last one? I mean, when you think about coming back. And coming back to the Yankees, when you came back, you know, you came back as kind of the elder statesman. You had won all those times. And now you come back after the, the, the time in Houston. You come back to, to, and, and get in one more. That had, to be, that had to be special getting back and getting in there one more time. It, it did. It was, it was really as, almost as sweet as the first one, really. Just, just because it had been a while and for us, you know, uh, there in New York, we, we, you know, that's the goal every year. And, and for that's, you know, five, six, seven year stretch when we were winning them, you know, it was like, okay, you're just going back, you're going back. And then you have a little six, you know, seven year drought. It's like, hang on a second, man. You know, it ain't as easy as we, it ain't as easy as we, we made it look, you know. And then, of course, 
oh, well, at the age we are, we're not going to be able to do it um, and, and to be able to pull it off and to get it done was was extremely, extremely fun. And then for me also, it was it was great, like you said, to be a kind of older statesman there and, and to be able to pitch well. I, I was able to, to pitch the clinching games, I think, in each one of those series. You and did, so, yeah, and won two games in that World Series too, including yeah, the clincher. Yeah. Yeah, and so that was that was awesome, you know, to be later in my career uh, for the stuff to kind of diminish a little bit, the velocity to kind of go down a little bit. But I felt like my smarts was was way up, and and my location was extremely good, and you know, being able to really take advantage of the aggressiveness of a hitter and stuff like that. I, I just, I, you know, the last few years of my career, I felt like oh, I was twice as good as I was earlier in my career. It's, it's pretty amazing just as a pitcher if you can stay healthy. Um, you know, and I guess being left-handed also helps, but how how, how you can kind of stick around and, and be successful. You know, Matt Suey had such a great series. We remember that. But you too, I mean, winning two games in that series, uh, you know, winning the 18th and 19th wins in the postseason and having all those clinches. I mean, you, you, you know, you had an amazing record in the ALCS. I mean, you were tremendous in those ALCS. You had, you had so many big wins there. But that last one, that, you know, that 09 gets lost. But think about it. The Yankees wouldn't have a World Series since 2000 if they didn't have that one in 09. That 09 was a very big World Series for everybody because, you know, Cashman, Girardi, none of those guys would have lasted all that time if they didn't win that World Series in 09. I mean, otherwise it's been a long drought. Yeah, it was. It was very important. You know, they went out and signed CC and got AJ and Tashera and, we, you know, they made a big splash and we, we definitely, definitely needed to win one. Uh, just getting there wouldn't have been satisfying. I don't, I don't believe. Uh, so that was very important. That's for sure. It really was. Uh, when you think back over your career, and you have so many things. I mean, the you never lost the, you never had a losing record in the regular season. You had all those years where you won games. You know, you did. You you pitched 18 years in the majors, which is unbelievable. You know, you won as many games as you won. Uh, all the different things. What are you proudest of? Um, I guess just as far as I guess you're asking about individual time, I think maybe the, you know, never having a losing season. Um, Which is unbelievable know, in 18. I know you were on good teams, but it's still remarkable in 18 it, years. It's pretty difficult. It, it really is because it's not, you're not good all the time. I mean, you just, you have bad years and you have years where things just don't go right for you. And I had them. And, uh, you know, there was years where I didn't think there was any way possible I'd be able to get back to 500 or to have a winning record. And, and just to be able to, uh, again, going back to just mentally, just grinding through that and, and approaching every game um, as if it's my last game I'm going to pitch and as if it's a, a World Series game. I, I, I really I never took any game for granted. And, and um, I, I just took them each so seriously and then thought each was so important no matter if we were out of the playoffs or, or right in the thick of it or whatever. So I'm pretty proud of, of being able to do that. And, and of course, you know, it, it's really special, obviously, to have that opportunity to pitch in, in you know, so many postseason games and, win, you know, being able to win 19 of them. Uh, but I also contribute that, and you know that, you, you know what I've told you many, many times, the, the Yankees have always surrounded me with just such great talent and, and such great teams. I feel like that a lot of that and most of that comes from being a product of great people around me and, and great teammates around me. You know, uh, I was interviewing Mickey Mantle once, and he won. It went to twelve World Series and won seven. Uh, and he said, "Forget the seven I won. The one I lost in '60 still bugs me uh, to the Pirates. And never should have <laughs> lost that World Series. Yeah. Is there any series game? I would think it's 0-1 that bug. If there's anything oh. that bugs you, is 0-1 bug you? He nailed it. I mean, yeah, it, that, that, that one. I was at that, both those games. That was a tough series to lose <laughs> once going out there for those last two games. That, 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 was, that, that one hurt. I, I felt like I cost us that World Series. I no, really they could have won. Listen, they're winning game seven in the ninth You're inning. You're right. Though. You're right. But I just felt like that I, it never should have been there. And, and I felt like, you know, uh, I just um, – didn't pitch well, and of course, you know, I'm sure you, you know. I think everyone knows. I, I, uh, I, I was tipping my pitches. Yeah, they thought and, you and were so tipping was, your pitches. Yeah, that absolutely. That was frustrating. Yeah. You know, they let me know after the series was over, which I appreciate that. You know, <laughs> I, I, I don't expect them to tell me during the series, but 
uh, Todd uh, was over there, Stottlemyre, and he told Mel. And so I was able to correct that and get it straightened out after the series was over. But that stung to, to lose a World Series and to know um, because I, I felt so good and, and so healthy and so strong um, in that series. And, and you know, to, to make pitches that I was making and, and to get kind of knocked around a little bit. And, um, you, you know, you just kind of know something's going on because it's just not normal. I mean, you know if you throw a good pitch or not, guys are really not supposed to foul that one off or, or, or get barrel on that one like, you know, somebody just did. And you're like out there scratching your head. And so it's just so precious to get to a World Series and to have an opportunity to win one. And, you know, so that one just, that one eats at me. And then also the biggest reason is because of 9-11. Yeah. Um, you know, how bad we wanted to win that one for the city. It's amazing uh, with all the momentum. And they won, and the Yankees, as you remember, won those crazy games with those home runs. Oh, and, yeah. and flying out there, none of us thought the Yankees could lose that series. But even no in Game way. 7, sitting there with a lead in the ninth inning, and Mariano blew him away in the eighth inning. He struck out the side. I mean, yeah. and, and then the yeah. ninth inning happened. Some things are not, just not meant to be, you know? It, you're exactly right. And, and I mean, it just, it just wasn't meant to be and and that's the way it worked out you know we wish we could have got that one but boy we had a great team and we gave it all we had and uh you know, unfortunately, we weren't able to pull that one off. Well, listen, you know what? You can you can talk about that, and, and it's okay when you've already won five World Series. So it's you know, you, it's <laughs> yeah, a lot easier yeah. when you've played an eight and won five in your career. I mean, that's a that's an amazing. You know, when I used to look at these Yankee careers and see this guy was in nine, this guy was in ten. I mean, you in a modern era, you went, you played an eight World Series. That's an incredible feat. It really is. Yeah, it is. I'm so thankful. I feel like I've obviously been very blessed and fortunate to be able to do it, man. And, and and it was it was fun. It was fun. I can tell you that much. Well, listen. I I know uh, you're busy, and uh, first of all, I wish you boys well. I hope they heal well and get back on the mound. And thanks for giving us a couple of minutes. And again, you know, you're always a favorite, and uh, was uh, great having you here all these years. And uh, you had a wonderful career, and it's nice to look back at it. So I thank you for coming on a couple of minutes. Have a happy holidays, Andy. You bet, Mike, and thank you, man, and, and, and thank you for the way that you've uh, treated me through all the years that we were together, uh, your class act, and, and uh, you know, you be, you too, and whatever you get, we're going to move on to next, man. Just well, all the best you. from me to you. Thank you very much, Andy. Good luck. Okay, bye. All right, Andy Pettit, back after this.